Hey everyone and welcome back to another Terrarium build. This is one I've been meaning to make for quite a while now, but I never got around to it. I've had the supplies ready to go and I received a comment from Jason the other day requesting this build. Right away I knew it was finally time to make a lamp terrarium or as he put it, a lamparium. There are a number of ways that you could make one of these, but I'll only show you two options in this demonstration. Also check out the video description for more ideas and links on some of the products that I use in this video. For this demonstration I have some lamp jar kits and a build your own lamp kit. You can do more with the build your own lamp kit and it's the cheaper option of the two, but if you're not good with DIY then I believe something like the lamp jar kit is better suited for you. The lamp jar kit is quite simple. It's essentially just a lamp socket attached to a jar's lid. You could easily make one of these with the lamp kit that you will see shortly for less money, but again if you're not adept at DIY, this method is better suited for you. Anyways, this one is pretty much ready to go right out of the box. However, it's not well suited for a terrarium because there is a hole going into the electrical component and because there's nothing protecting the metal from moisture. So we'll keep it simple and protect it using a rubber packing sheet. I picked these up at Lowe's for a few bucks, so they're a simple and cheap solution. What we're going to do is use the jar as a guide and cut out the rubber to create a makeshift gasket. Afterward I cut out the center of the rubber and attached it to the lid. Then I cut out another piece of rubber slightly larger than the diameter of the jar's opening. This one was placed into the lid like before in order to conceal the hole leading to the electrical components. Realistically we could have got away with using only a single piece of rubber, but it never hurts to be more thorough. Anyways with the rubber inserts in the lid, the jar was now ready to become a terrarium. Jar lamp kits like this one are nice, but they can be somewhat pricey and they're not as versatile as a DIY lamp kit. If you want to make a light that's a little more unique, then I recommend getting something like this. In most cases, they will come with a plug, light socket, and other components that you may or may not need for your terrarium build. Putting this together is really simple and in most cases they'll have directions on the back of the package, but the main thing that you need to do here is understand the difference between the wires. You'll notice that the socket has a brass or golden screw and a silver screw. Accordingly, there's a difference between the wires connected to the plug. One wire is completely smooth, while the other has a ridge running the length of it. The smooth wire will be attached to the golden screw, and the textured wire will be attached to the silver screw. That being said, I don't want to get into all the specifics about wiring a lamp, so I'll link you up with a short tutorial down in the video description. This whole process may seem somewhat daunting, but it's really quite simple. As I said earlier, you have a lot of options with this solution. You could drill a hole into the lid of a jar to create something similar to what we used earlier, or even attach it to a cork of an old wine bottle, and that's exactly what I'll be doing here. To avoid ruining the cork with my drill, I gradually worked my way up to the correct size, and I recommend you do the same. Occasionally, corks will allow moisture to escape. That's normally not an issue, but since we're dealing with electricity here, we want to eliminate any potential issues. So I wrapped the lamp component in a plastic bag before screwing it into the cork. Afterward I removed the excess bag and tested it out in the bottle. For now, that's all that needs to be done with the lamp components. Now let's make the terrariums. As usual, we'll begin with the false bottoms. If you want to learn more about this procedure, I have a complete tutorial linked up at the top and down in the video description. All that I'm doing here is placing a layer of gravel into each container, which will act as a drainage element. Next, I cut out a circle of carbon fiberglass window screen mesh for each terrarium. In doing so, I cut each piece slightly larger than the diameter of the containers. This component is important because it will create a barrier that mitigates the amount of substrate that could potentially get down into the drainage element. Then, a layer of activated carbon was added into each terrarium. This will act as a purification element. I mentioned more about this in the video that I linked up previously. From there, I incorporated a nice layer of my terrarium substrate. If you want to learn how to make the mix I'm using here, follow the link above or check out the video description. This substrate is great for terrariums because it helps create the ideal environment for long-term success. 
Next, I proceeded to hardscape the jar with some sandstone. I did so to create a more interesting landscape and overall aesthetic. After doing so, I added more substrate to the background. Then I added various types of moss and some liverwort. After creating a unique design, I proceeded to water the terrarium with some dechlorinated water. Then I placed a twig to create a bit of an accent. Next I added some springtails from one of my master cultures. These little arthropods will help eliminate any potential mold outbreaks and help keep the terrarium nice and healthy. If you want to learn more about these guys, check out the above link or the video description. To complete this terrarium, I attached the lid, got a lampshade, and screwed in the light bulb. Now let's move on to the other terrarium. I kept it simple and planted it with a few cuttings of purple waffle plant and pink photonia. Then I placed a twig to create a little bit of an accent. I kept it simple in this regard because the plants will fill in the space over time. From there I added various patches of moss and some liverwort. Just like the other terrarium, it was watered with some dechlorinated water and some springtails were added to the mix. Once this grows in a bit, I will also likely add some isopods to help keep the plant growth in check. From there I disassembled the lamp component so that I could add a harp. After doing so I put everything back together and attached it to the bottle. Like the other terrarium I also added a light bulb and a lampshade. To make the overall aesthetic cleaner for each terrarium, I added a command strip for some cord management. And here we are, our fully completed lamp terrariums or lampariums. As I said in the beginning of the video, there are endless possibilities to what you can do here. I just wanted to show you some basic ideas to get your creative juices flowing. What I like about these terrariums is they are aesthetically pleasing and they also serve a function. I recommend keeping your terrarium near a window so that it can be lit with natural sunlight. However, since the light is built into this, you could easily light your terrarium with artificial lighting. Overall, I really like how these turned out and chances are that I will be making many more. Be sure to check out the video description for links and additional ideas that I didn't mention in the video. As always, I thank you for watching and I hope that you make your own lamparium someday soon. If you want to learn more about terrariums and other naturalistic enclosures, check out my channel for tons of content just like this. If you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, I'd greatly appreciate the support. Also subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more edutainment just like this. Finally, if you have ideas for future content, leave it below and I may give you a shout out in a future video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one Serpa Squad. Peace.